On March 11, 1947, Admiral Byrd wrote in his diary, I have just attended a staff meeting at the Pentagon. I had stated fully my discovery and the message from the master. All is duly recorded. The president has been advised. I am now detained for several hours. To be exact, six hours, 39 minutes. I am interviewed intently by top security forces and a medical team. It was an ordeal. I am placed under strict control via the national security provisions of this United States of America. I am ordered to remain silent in regard to all that I have learned on behalf of humanity. Incredible. I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey orders. On Monday, we started to explore the mystery of what lies beneath our feet. The idea that our Earth is possibly hollow. That episode will be down in the description box below as we now move into part two. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, Special thank you to all of our patrons. If you would like to help support this channel and join our patron team, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today on part two of our series of Hollow Earth, we are going to be talking about Agartha. Now, yes, before we get started, I am back in my bedroom as I was on Monday, and I appreciate all of you guys being so understanding of the fact that I had to move locations. Again, there is something going on in our front room, and so I had to move back into the bedroom. I hope that the sound is okay, and again, I really appreciate your patience. These last couple of weeks have been very, very hectic for not only me, but for my boyfriend as well. Well, and so we're trying to work around each other as we continue to do a lot of our own work from home. Now, as we venture into part two of Agartha, I do want to note that there will be a video in the description box below from a bit shoot channel that goes into the scientific study of gravity. Science is not my favorite subject. I'm not good at numbers. It's not my wheelhouse, if you will. I'm more of a philosophy, history, literature type of person. Always have been, always will be. But if you want more information on the scientific study of the possibility of a hollow earth, please make sure to check out the video down in the link below. Admiral Richard Byrd was born in 1888. He came from a long line of very prestigious people in the Americas. You see, he was from a line of families who was one of the first families to settle the colony of Virginia. In fact, it is said that Admiral Richard Byrd was a descendant of Pocahontas and her husband, John Rolfe. Admiral Richard Byrd would go on to win the Medal of Honor and be a very celebrated person in our American Navy. This was not a man who made up wild stories. This was a man who was very much respected by the American government and the American people. In 1947, Admiral Byrd decided to take an expedition and fly over the North Pole. The North Pole is not accessible to many people nowadays. In fact, in order to get that close to the North Pole or the South Pole, you have to have special permission from all these governments who've arranged a treaty to keep the North and South Pole unaccessible to the average human. Upon Bird's arrival at the North Pole, it appears that he ended up flying his plane down into a tunnel or a portal, if you like. In fact, it is said that he traveled 17 
hundred miles into the center of the earth. It says that when he realized what was happening, he lost control of the plane, but then these other flying saucery ships showed up and started guiding his plane to land. Admiral Byrd said even though they were coming from the North Pole where there was snow and ice, all of a sudden the temperature changed and there was vegetation. There were mountains and rivers and lakes and animals. Not to mention when his plane landed, he met the inhabitants of this mystical place that appeared to be in the center of our Earth. They took Admiral Byrd to their leader, to their master, who told them that they were greatly concerned about the condition of humanity up above them. Since the atomic bomb had been created and things like Hiroshima had happened, they were greatly concerned that humanity would end up destroying itself and destroying the kingdom beneath humanity. They ended up telling Admiral Burr that they had allowed him into this mystical land inside the Earth's center because of his character. It appears they wanted Admiral Byrd to go back up to the surface and tell humans about this land in the middle of our Earth. That we were not alone. That we shared this place with other beings. In 1947, Admiral Byrd also said, I would like to see the land beyond the pole. The area beyond the pole that is the center of the great enigma. This place beyond the poles is also called by some cultures the Rainbow City. But its most famous name is that of Agartha. Admiral Byrd would go on to lead another expedition in 1956 in the South Pole to also try to get back to the kingdom of Agartha that is supposedly in the center of our Earth. This time Admiral Byrd got 2300 miles into the core of the Earth. Now as you saw from the beginning, as I read from part of Admiral Byrd's diary, he was quickly silenced by the military. He was reminded by the United States government that he was a soldier and a soldier's main duty is to obey orders. It seems like the United States government convinced Admiral Byrd that by speaking about these beings that lived in the center of our earth would be traumatic for humanity. Therefore, ignorance is bliss. However, in 2021, we now know that our government should not be trusted. And I have my suspicions on why they wanted to silence Admiral Byrd. Well, it seems that Admiral Byrd's son potentially, allegedly, in my opinion, might have felt the same way. Because after Admiral Byrd died, his son published his diary. You can see his full diary in a link in the description box below. As we talked about on Monday, as we introduced this huge, huge mystery that literally concerns every single person on this planet, the idea of a hollow earth or a kingdom within the hollow earth is nothing new. Our ancient ancestors collectively told stories and legends and folklore of beings coming from the inner earth. In fact, if you Google passages in the Bible regarding the inner earth, there are quite a few. Two that really caught my attention were Philippians 2.10. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And also Exodus 24, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now we know that Admiral Byrd spoke about rivers and lakes and all sorts of bodies of water existing in this kingdom within the center of our earth. 
So it seems that the information regarding Agartha has been in front of us the whole time. It truly is just like what Edgar Allan Poe said. As mentioned in one of my sources I used to research this information, the best place to hide something is always in plain sight. Another person to greatly believe in the idea of a kingdom inside of our earth was a 19th century occultist by the name of Alexander St. Eves. Alexander St. Eves believed in this idea that all of humanity was connected that everybody affected everybody else, that basically we are all one. This is not a new concept to us today, but in the 19th century, that might have been quite a scandalous assumption to make about the state of humanity. Now, Alexander St. Eves was a Rosicrucian and a Freemason. And even though we know the Freemasons not, might not be that, um, benevolent, if you know what I mean. I think we do have to take what they believe seriously because they have been responsible for helping to hide the truth from humanity. Now in 1885, Alexander St. Eves claims that he had communication with a being who lived in Agartha. He claims that these beings in Agartha went down to Agartha in the year 3200 BC. In fact, out of all these claims, there are basically two species, from what I gather, that allegedly live in Agartha. One is the reptilian race. We're very familiar with the reptilians, the Anunnaki, the Draco, the lizard people, if you will. And the other would be a race of giants, tall and lanky. Now, whether these two species get along, I have no idea. However, in 1886, Alexander St. Eves wrote a book documenting his communication with a being that lived in the center of our earth. After he wrote this book, he ended up destroying every copy except for two, fearing that humanity was not ready to hear the truth. He was definitely afraid that he had said too much. And in fact, he is quoted as saying that the kingdom in the center of the earth will be accessible to all mankind when Christianity lives up to the commandments. Alexander St. Eves was not the only person to write about correspondence with the inhabitants of Middle Earth. In 1908, William George Emerson wrote the book, The Smoky God. This was the biography of a Norwegian sailor named Olaf Jensen. Olaf Jensen allegedly sailed through the entrance of the North Pole and lived there for two years with its inhabitants, who he claimed were 12 feet tall. Allegedly, Olaf Jensen made this trip with his father on his way back, on their way back, to our plane of existence. His father did not make it. Now, sadly, Olaf Jensen, once he returned to his home country, was put into an insane asylum for his claims of living in Middle Earth for two years. Another book written was that by Dr. Raymond Bernard, who wrote The Hollow Earth. This was regarding Dr. Nephi Cotton of Los Angeles, who had a Nordic patient with a similar story. In this story, it is written by the Nordic patient. I lived near the Arctic Circle in Norway. One summer, my friend and I made up our minds to take a boat trip together and go as far as we could into the North Country. So we put a month's worth of food provisions in a small fishing boat and set to sea. At the end of one month, we had traveled far into the North, beyond the Pole, and into a strange new country. We were much astonished at the weather there, warm, and at times at night it was almost too warm to sleep. 
Then we saw something so strange that we were both astonished. Ahead of the warm open sea, we were on what looked like a great mountain. Into that mountain at a certain point that ocean seemed to be emptying. Mystified, we continued into that direction and found ourselves sailing into a vast canyon leading into the interior of the earth. We kept sailing and then we saw what surprised us, a sun shining inside the earth. The ocean that had carried us into the hollow interior of the earth gradually became a river. This river led, as we came to realize later, all through the inner surface of the world from one end to another. It can take you, if you follow it, long enough from the North Pole clear through to the South Pole. We saw that the inner earth surface of the earth was divided, as the other one is, into both land and water. There is plenty of sunshine, and both animal and vegetable life abounds there. We sailed further and further into this fantastic country. Fantastic because everything was so huge in size as compared with the things on the outside. Plants are big, trees are gigantic, and finally we came to giants. They were dwelling in homes and towns just as we do on the earth's surface, and they used a type of electrical conveyance, like a monorail car, to transport people. It ran along the river's edge from town to town. Several of the inner earth inhabitants, huge giants, detected our boats on the river and were quite amazed. They were, however, quite friendly. We were invited to dine with them in their homes, and so my companion companions and I separated, he going with one giant to the giant's home and I going with another giant to his home. My gigantic friend brought me home to his family and I was completely dismayed to see the huge size of all the objects in his house. The dinner table was colossal. A plate was put before me and filled with a portion of food so big it would have fed me abundantly for an entire week. The giant offered me a cluster of grapes, and each grape was b as big as one of our peaches. I tasted one and found it far sweeter than any I had ever tasted outside. In the interior of the earth, all fruits and vegetables taste far better and more flavorsome than those we have on the outer surfaces of the earth. We stayed with the giants for one year, enjoying their companionship as much as they enjoyed knowing us. We observed many strains and unusual things during our visit with these remarkable people and were continually amazed at their scientific progress and inventions. All of this time, they were never unfriendly to us and we were allowed to return to our own homes in the same manner as which we came. In fact, they courteously offered their protection if we should need it for the return voyage. Now, Admiral Byrd himself also spoke of a sun in the interior of the Earth. And as you guys know from a very old video we did on the giants, it is believed that the giants are still living in stasis in caves and caverns here on our planet today. If you have not seen those videos, I will place them as well in the description box below. And speaking of the giants, the legend of Gilgamesh states that he himself would go into the inner earth to visit his family, his ancestors, and we know Gilgamesh was a giant. We also know that there was very interesting information regarding Gilgamesh in some emails written by Hillary Clinton in WikiLeaks. There also appears to be tunnels under the pyramids of Giza. In fact, it was believed in Egyptian legend that the pharaohs were able to go into the tunnels to communicate and talk to the beings that lived down in the inner earth of Agartha. Now, in the epic Indian story of Ramayana, one of my personal favorite stories coming from all of this folklore from the Hindu faith, it is believed that the avatar of Rama came up himself from the land of Agartha. 
The people of India also believed in a group of people called the Naga. These people were serpent-like people. Interesting, right? Since People who have had these experiences with the inner earth inhabitants speak of giants and reptilians and serpents, reptilians, kind of the same thing. So interesting. Now they believe that the serpent people were waging war with humanity. Now the name Agartha is a Buddhist name. And the Buddhist people believe that many, many, many years ago, people were led to the center of the earth by a leader. The capital of Agartha being a city called Shambhala, where this leader allegedly still lives today. Now the people of Tibet, the Buddhist people, believed that the people of Inner Earth were way more advanced than humanity on the Outer Earth. Now something that was very, very new to me is that they believe that the Dalai Lama is the terrestrial representative of the king, the leader of Agartha. And it is through one of their temples that's guarded by lamas that this tunnel still exists where the Dalai Lama communicates with the leader of Agartha. But more on that in part four of our series of the Hollow Earth. Yes, I know this is part two. There will be one more episode regarding the inner earth before we get to the interesting and somewhat scandalous story of the Dalai Lama. Now again, I've got a lot of references down in the description box for you, including Admiral Byrd's diary. In my opinion, he seems to be the most reliable source. This was not a man that took to fantasy or whimsical ideas. And for me, the legends of Agartha are way more plausible than the idea of a flat earth, even though an inner earth could also be in a flat earth as well. At the end of the day, as I said on Monday, I have no idea what the truth is anymore. I just want to know what the truth is. So what do you guys think of Agartha? Let me know down in the comment section below. I hope you all have a wonderful Friday and a fantastic weekend ahead. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the full opening song, there is again a link down in the description box below. And as always, thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys today. I hope you all again have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye!